let, let us begin. So we we Bez Hashem today's daf is daf daf samach hey. I just so let's just uh, I'll tell you where we're starting from in a moment, but uh, just to review, the Mishnah began and told us that if someone is married for ten years, right, and he didn't and and stayed and did not have a child with the with with her with with his wife, he really has to remarry, and uh, so he gives her a divorce. Now, she being a divorce, she's not considered to be a woman who can't have children. So therefore, if she divorced, she's permitted to marry somebody else who did not have as of yet children because you would, uh, because she's potentially someone who could have a child. It's just that union didn't work out. So that's what the Mishnah says. But the only the Mishnah gives her one more chance. And and the and the second one can wait with her another ten years, but there's no third chances. So let's go into the Gemara over here. We are on Daf Samach Dalad Amid Beis, about like ten lines from the wide lines. Ger Shemuteris. So the Gemara says Sheni, if to marry a second time in, yes, that's possible for her. She can marry uh, a second marriage. Shalishi, but to marry a third a third time to a man that has not yet had children. That's low. She's not allowed to do that because she's causing that person not to have children. And she's considered to be a chazaka. You know what I mean? Chazaka will call chazaka called a high probability. She's a high probability person that's not capable of having children. And after two tests, we can assume that she has a chazaka. So the Gemara says, Masni Samani, who's our Mishnah going like? So that after two times, we consider her to have a high probability, a chazaka. Rebihi, the Tanya we learned in Abraisa. In another scenario, uh, where where we find Chazaka is established, a high probability is established after twice. The incident happened twice. So the the Brisa says Mala Harisha, um, a lady may, uh, that's basically what it means. But a lady gave a bris to her firstborn Umais, and that child died. Shani, and she had the second kid Umais, and that child died. So the, if she gives birth again, Shlishi for a third boy. Tamul, she should not give not give a mila because it's a, it shows that in her family there's a danger for giving grisin. Rebbe, that's the words of Rebbe. Rabbi Shimon Megamliel, you have to wait three times. Shlishi Tamul, the third kid can get a bris mila. Ravi, by the fourth child, Loi Tamul, she shouldn't get a bris mila. He shouldn't get a bris mila. So that is that is the this discussion over here. The discussion here is. When do you say there's a high probability of something to event to happen? Rebbe said it happens after two times. Mm-hmm. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says it happens after three times. Says the Gemara of Atanyu Ipacha. We learned just the opposite that Rebbe said it happens after three times, and Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says it happens after two times. So the Gemara says, if you want to determine who said what, so hey minayu achri nasa. You have to determine which brisa was said. The last, in other words, it's obvious that Rebbe and Rabbi Shimon Megamliel switched positions, and they said one thing, and uh, and then they switched their own position. So all you have to do, do is find out at the end of their life what did they hold. So Tashma, come in here. Now Rabbi Yochanan was one of the first Amoraim, early Amoraim, and he could say a, a story about a Tana. And he says like this, Masa, there was a story. Ba'arba achiyis There are four sisters in Tzipari, four sisters. And so basically each, each, each sister that's having a baby, they're all cousins. Shemal Rishayinu, one of them gave birth and had a bris, Umais, and the child died. Shnia, another sister gave birth, Umais, and that child died after the bris. Shlishis, the third child gave birth, Umais, and that child died. Revias, but when the fourth sister gave birth, and all the cousins died. Boss Lufnei Rab Shimon Megaliel. They came before Rab Shimon Megaliel. Amala, and he said, "Al Tamuli, don't give a bris milah." So we see from here, we see from here that Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel is the, of the opinion that three times establishes the chazaka, three times establishes the high probability, and that was his opinion at the end of his life. Possibly Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel had that two times establishes a chazaka, but then he switched and changed his position. So the Gemara says that's not a proof from that story over there. But Dilma, the Gemara challenges that. If there was a, if, 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 if they would have approached Rabshim and Gamliel 
by the third kid, he would have also said not to give a bris milah. Um, uh, he also said that. What's the proof that it was after the story happened that after the fourth time, they finally came to the rabbi. But maybe after two times, he would have said that you shouldn't give a bris milah. So the Gemara says, then what's the point of the story? What's the point of Rabbi Baraba telling over this whole story if after two times uh, you could establish a chazaka? So the Gemara says, no, Vedilma, possibly, the, the point of the story is that the achoyas mechaskois, that cousins can establish a, a something with the, within the family. In other words, really after two times, you establish that it's a chazaka. But maybe it, it, we only establish chazaka if only one mother had two children that died uh, during the bris milah. Would you say the same if it's their sisters and only cousins died during bris milah? Would you say that? So that's the point of the story, that even with cousins, you would say that uh, if one of the if three of them died or two of them died in a bris milah, you won't give a, a bris milah on the third cousin. So the Gemara uh, says a fascinating thing about Shaduchim. Uh, Amar Rava, Rava said, Hasha da Amrit Achoyas Mechaskes. Now that you just told me this story, this is in, irrelevant, but this is talking about Shaduchim. If you tell me that sisters uh, cause a, um, a chazaka, a high probability of something wrong, and we could establish a, 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 a connection, so Loi Yisa Adam Isha, a man should not marry a woman, Loi Mimishpachas Nichbin, not from a family that has epilepsy. Or a, a family that has lep, uh, leprosy. So epilepsy or leprosy. You have to establish that three people in that family have this kind of sickness. So then you say there must be something in the genetics of that family. And a person should avoid uh, doing a shirikh with that. So the Gemara says like this. My hava Allah, back to the story about Chazaka. What establishes um, uh, a Chazaka? Two or three times. So the Gemara says, Ki asa Rabbi Yitzchak bar Yosef Omar. He said like this, Uv dahave kamed Rabbi Yochanan, there was a story in front of Rabbi Yochanan. Bechnishtu demoim. Rabbi Yochanan in the basic classes of Ma'on, a place called Ma'on. And it was Yom Kippur, Shechol Yes, B'Shabbos. Yom Kippur and Shabbos, the most strictest day of the year. And the truth is, prior to Yom Kippur, there, um, uh, there was a woman, Umala Rishayna, she gave birth and she gave a wrist meal to her first child, Umais, and died. Shnia, she gave birth to a second child, Umais, and died. Shlishis, this was the third child who's supposed to have his bris mila on Yom Kippur that came out on Shabbos. So you have to give the right decision over here. Because if, he, if, if this kid's not supposed to have a bris mila, then, then you're violating the Yom Kippur and Shabbos. And, and, uh, and, uh, if he's, and, and possibly, and you give a bris mila, it's a danger. So Shlishis Balafonov. So the, again, there was two people, two of, the, two of his siblings had a bris mila and they died. And the third one came before Rabbi Yechanan. And he passed in, Amalah umili, go give a bris mila, because two times doesn't establish a chazaka. Amalei Abayas, Abayas said, chazu, let's see, this, 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 this psak is so strong, the kosharis isura v'sakanta. Rabbi Yechanan gave per, a, a, a permission to, because if he got it wrong, there was an iser, a prohibition of being Michal Shabbos, and a danger to the child. And nevertheless, Rabbi Yochanan Paskin, that two times is not considered to be a chazaka. And so, 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 so firm in his opinion was Rabbi Yochanan that only that three times establishes a chazaka, not two times. So Abayu, when he heard the psak of Rabbi Yochanan in his own personal life, he, he went along with that. And look what happened to him. Samachla Abaya. Abaya relied on Rabbi Yechenin's psaq. Ba'azul nasaba l'chuma. He married this lady called Chuma. And who was this lady called Chuma? This Chuma lady was Brata the Isi Bereid Rabbi Yitzchak Bereid Rabbi Yehuda. She was the daughter of Isi, the son of Rabbi Yitzchak, the son of Rabbi Yehuda. So he married, he married uh, this Chuma. The problem was, this Chuma was the Nasva Rachva Bepumpedisoshchev. She was pre-married prior to marrying Abaya to this person Rachva, a Pumpedis, and, and died. And she was also married to Rabbi Yitzchak, Bereid Rabbi Babachana, Shchev. And, and, and she was married to Rabbi Yitzchak, the son of Rabbi Babachana, and he also died. So he, so see, uh, her, her two previous husbands before marrying Abaya passed on. Unusavahu, and Abaya married her because two is not a Chazaka. And the end of the story is not so good. Ushchev. Apparently, he suddenly died, Abaya. So, uh, so Amar Rava, Rava said he couldn't. He, Rava, who's always the 
opposite of Abaya. He was always the Bar Plukta, the one who argued against Abaya, the protagonist. He even, he even like almost like was angry at Abaya for doing this. Me, Ika, the Ovid, Uvda, the Nashikai, who would take such a risk like Abaya just did? And, and, and think about it. Of all, Ehud Amar, he said, Oven the Samcha, Yitzchak Sumaka. Whenever Rav Oven says something about Rabbi Yochanan, you can rely on that. But if there's a person called Yitzchak, if you look at closely the story before about Rabbi Yochanan saying over that two times is a, um, a, a two times is considered to be a, um, a, a Chazaka, was Rabbi Yitzchak by Yosef. He was a Talmud of Rabbi Yochanan. And he, Rabbi, Rabbi himself says, Sumaka, he's red, you can't rely on him. He's unreliable when he says something about Rabbi Yochanan. So, La Bar Snichna, he's not somebody you can rely on. And why is that? Oven, Yeshna Bechazare. Rabbi Oven was so around Rabbi Yochanan that when Rabbi Yochanan changed his mind, uh, he was there and, and he knew that Rabbi Yochanan changed his mind. Yitzchak Sumaka ain't a Bechazara. He wasn't always around Rabbi Yochanan. It's possible that Rabbi Yochanan changed his mind and he didn't hear that Rabbi Yochanan changed his mind and he, and he, and he coughed up and said a testimony about the wrong psak of Rabbi Yochanan. So Rabbi was almost like angry Rabbi, that Abaya got married based on thinking that two is not a Chazaka and he married this lady and then he died. But another, another question about this question and here is another question Maybe Amar the Pligila in Yamila. Maybe there's the argument whether two or three is an argument whether you by Brismila. Benesu and me pligi. Is there an argument by marriage? By marriage, maybe you should be more machmer that right after two, you don't marry a woman who's predeceased her husband, who, who whose husband died if she was married twice before. So that the Gemara says in. Yes, there is an argument on that. Vahatanya, as we learned in Abraisa. If a woman, Nisa Slarisha, married the first husband, Umais, he died. Lashani married the second husband, Umais, and he died. Lashlishi, Laitina, she should not, we should, Bezdin should not allow her to get married for the third time. Divri Rebbe, this was, this was the words of Rebbe. Rabbi Shimbin Ben Gamliel, I mean, Rabbi Shimbin Ben Gamliel says, Lashlishi, um, uh, she could get married for the third time. She should not get married for the fourth time. So you see that even by marriage, uh, they still had the machlekes, and Shimon ben Gamliel said that you could r- rely that this woman could marry, um, could, could get married if, uh, if as long as she didn't uh, uh, she didn't outlive three husbands. So the Gemara just wants to understand what's what what could go wrong by a a marriage, and why is it that maybe this, these husbands are dying? What does it have to do with her? So the Gemara says Bishla Magabe Mila. I understand regarding giving a circumcision. If two brothers died, so then we don't give it to the third brother. Or because Ika Mishbacha the Rafidama, there's some families that have the, the blood settles in to the, that does not settle into the body so quickly. And therefore, if you give a bris mila at eight days, it's a sakana for the child. Ika Mishbacha the Kalmet Dama. And there's some families that the blood gets, uh, gets absorbed into the, to the, to the limbs of the body. And therefore, it's not going to bleed. Maybe it's hemophilia. I don't know what, the, what it's talking about. But basically, there's some families that are prone to die after brismila at, after eight days. So I, it's understandable that if you have two brothers or three brothers that died, you have a chazaka that there's a high probability that the next brother is also going to die. So you don't give a brismila. Ellen is suing Matama. What's wrong with Nisuin? Just because a, a woman outlived her previous husband, what, what does that have to do with her? Amal Rav Marcha Ravashi, or Marcha said to Ravashi, this is what uh, Avimi from Agroini said in the name of Rabbi Huna. That the reason is that we blame her somewhat is Mayan Gara. The fact that they have marital relations, perhaps the, her marital relation causes him to get sick. <coughs> Ravashi says, Mazol Gara. It's not a marital relation issue. It's her Mazol that causes when she gets married that her husband should die. My benayu, what's a practical difference between the two of them? Ike benayu, there'll be a difference if the third husband, the heiresses umis, that you, you gave a heiresen and he died. It means you didn't, you didn't have marital relations. So then she could technically go marry the fourth husband because she didn't have marital relations. Inami, if the third husband, the nafal medikla umis, he fell from a tree. He didn't die from a disease or anything like that. He fell from a tree and he died. So it's obviously, it's not the marital relations that caused the death. It was a sudden tragic event. 
So therefore, according to the Ravashi, that woman, that, that according to Rav Huna, if, if the whole point is Mayongaram, the marital relation causes, and here it's not because of marital relations, therefore she could marry for the fourth time or third time. Reminds me of what Jacqueline Kennedy said, the first time you marry for love, uh, the, 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 what, what she says, the second time you marry for money and the third time you marry for companionship. Anyway, Amalei Ravath Yosef Berei de Rava le Rava. Rav Yosef, uh, the son of Rava, said to Rava, by the name of Yosef, they asked the question, Rabbi Yosef, halacha ka Rabbi, is the halacha ka, like Rabbi, it's after two times, but Amalei and he said yes. Rav Yosef said yes. Halacha Rav Shimon Gamaliel, is the halacha like Rav Shimon Gamaliel, it's after three times, but Amalei and he said yes. So he said, after two times and after three times is Chazaka. So the question is, uh, so Rav Yosef, the son of Rava, uh, uh, said, uh, uh, said over this question, achuche, achiche, bi, are you making a joke of me? Is it two or the three? Is halacha like Rabbi or halacha like Shimon Gliel? On the late light, stomachy, it, no, it, there are many different uh, anonymous mishnas. Well, Pashat Lach, and I'll explain to you. It depends what halacha. Nisuyin umalkis, when it comes to marriage and giving uh, malkus, we paskin like Rabbi. Vesosois, vishar hamuid, vestus, and shar hamuid, we paskin like Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. So let's see. Nisuyin, who are Amram, by marriage, we, we, we're we machmir because it's a kind of somebody dying. So we say, if the, if the, only after two times, already after two times, we have a high probability. Malkius, what's Malkius? The Tanam, we learned in the Mishnah. Mishalaka vishan, if a man got malkus twice. In other words, he was over a, a Issa Chorus twice, and he got Malchus and did it again. We don't uh, do it. We don't give him Malchus for the third time. What do they do? If Bezdin has the uh, capability of doing this, Bezdin kinds of nice little keeper. They put him into a jail, and they give him to eat uh, barley. Until his his uh, stomach busts and he dies. So they have another way of of causing his death. In order, in order, because we don't want him to be over another Issacharis, because then uh, there's no tshuva for that. So therefore, that's what Bezdin does. So we paskin after two times they do this. Vesta is the Tanam, we learned in the Mishnah. What's that? We, we paskin our Shimon Gamliel. We Mishnah says, Eina Isha, we go, the woman, we go to Samachay Amad Aleph. Eina Isha, Koivas Lo Vesta. She can't establish a, a set time for having her period. Actually, to Kabanel Shalish Panam until she has the period at the exact same time three times. If she does, then then we assume that on the fourth time she's going to also have the period at the exact same time of the month, and therefore we don't metama things that she touched twenty four hours before. Because if if she has it, you know, she's not doesn't have a set time. So then when she sees, she finally sees our Dam Nida, we automatically metama everything that she touched beforehand because perhaps she started seeing early, she just didn't feel it yet. But if she, we know that she's established, she's like clockwork, she has it at this particular time, if she established the pattern three times, then that's called a veset. The Eina Materis bin Avet says, Achi to Ocham and Shalsh Pan. And she doesn't uh, lose that veset until, it, until, um, on the, until she had three times where she did not see it at that point. Then the Gemara says, Bishar Hamuid. A shar, an ox that's the, the that that gores three times. If the first two times, or the first three times actually, uh, we're going to pass in that the first three times you pay half damages. By the fourth time, then it's called the shar amur. The Torah says you pay, and so therefore the chazaka of making a shar amur is after three times. It's now we learn to the Mishnah in a shar nas amur actually by shalish shalish apartment until three times. Uh, the, until you until this happens three times, he's not a, the ox is not a murid, and it will only pay half damages. Gemara continues. Tan Rabban, the rabbis taught. Nisus Lurishan, the Loi Bonim. A man, a woman was married to the first husband. She didn't have any children. Lashani, the Loi Hoyalai Bonim. She married to the second one. She didn't have children. Lash Nisus Loi Tinasi, Ella Lamishi Yesh Loi Bonim. Like we said, she's not married the third time until the, unless the person has children already. She could get married, but not to somebody who does not have children. Let's say she fooled the guy and went and, and, and got married to somebody who has no children. So then right away, as soon as he finds out, Tetsi, he should give her a divorce because he's not supposed to remain with her. He has to marry somebody who is childbearing. And she, like Ksuba, she loses a Ksuba. So she loses a Ksuba because she fooled him and she didn't notify him that she's not childbearing and therefore she, he's not supposed to marry her. 
The question is, why does, uh, why does she need a get uh, for that? And that's a, a bit of a mystery. The whole, the whole marriage should be on a, on a, on a mistake. But anyway, she needs a, she gets a get and she loses her ksuba. Now the Gemara asks Tiboilahu a question. What a, what a, what a question. Uh, the, the woman married for the third time and she didn't have children. So now she really established that um, for over 30 years that she can't, she can't have children. So the, the first two husbands that gave her a ksuba, they, can they demand that she give it back? Can they demand that she gives it back? Because the first time that they're giving ksuba, uh, the first husband, she, he doesn't know that she's a, the problem. Could be he's the problem. But now that she was married three times and proved everybody that she is the problem, so maybe the first two husbands could now call back uh, the ksuba that they paid her. Me, say Amr Law, can they tell her, that now it turns out that you were the one that caused the, this this. Um, this problem, and therefore you shouldn't have taken suba from us. I Dilma Matzi Amrla. Maybe she could say Hashta Hu the Kachashu. Maybe now I became weak. In other words, now I became somebody who can't have children. When I was married to you, I was I had the potential. As I got older, I lost that power, and therefore I'm not considered to be. Uh, 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 I am not considered to be somebody who was never childbearing material, and therefore I'm not giving you back the suba. So the Gemara establishes Mustabra Matzus Amrlu. She can tell her then Hashtahu the Kachashi that and now I became somebody who's not childbearing, and therefore uh, I don't have to give you the ksuba because when I was married to you, the first two, I was capable. It's the it's my marriage to you that caused that I could not have children. So now the Gemara asks another reverse case. Ibayelahu, another question. Nisus Liravi. Now she got married to the third guy. Okay, so she got married the first two. She got her ksuba. She married to the third guy. She's a great woman. And she got divorced without a ksuba. But now she married the fourth guy and the magic. And she had children. So now can she go back to the third guy and say, listen, you, you divorced me without a ksuba. And, and, and really, you're supposed to give me the ksuba because now I prove that I could have children. And Amrina Law, we tell her. So the answer is It's better to be quiet and not request a ksuba from the third husband because from your, from your speaking. Why? The Matsi Amala, because the her husband could say, wait a second, if I would have known that you are capable of having children, I would have never divorced you. And therefore, I would have wanted you back. So, so then there's a big problem over here. So technically, if he could really say that, if that's what he really meant, and if that's what he really feels, that he never had any intention to divorce her, that means this whole get is a big mistake. And therefore, now that she has children, those children are mamzerim. So maskif lora papa, a papa says, so even if he, the third husband decides to keep quiet, i'ihi shaska, if he's going to keep quiet, anam are we going to be quiet? Ninsa get bottle, but now I'm We have a, a, a situation over here where the get was not a kosher get, and the children from the fourth husband is a mamzer. And the fact that we don't say that, okay, here's the thing: the fact that we don't say that, we automatically assume that when he gave the the third guy gave the get, he gave it with the full heart, and he he he, he never had any intention to have it any other way. He just wanted out from this marriage even if it turns out that that he that the, the lady would be of childbearing. So if that's the case, so the get was a good get. And therefore, therefore, why can't he, why can't she go ahead and ask for her ksubo? And says the Gemara, Ella Amrin, and the reason why she can't ask the, ask the ksuba is another reason. Because we can say, the third guy can say, really, you were not capable of having children when I was married to you. Ah, you had children after the fourth time, Hashta who did Briyosa. Now that you bec- you became healthy right now, you became healthy right now. That's why you're you're capable of having children. Not when I was married to you. When I was married to you, you were someone incapable of having children, and therefore my marriage to you was in, in, a mistake, and therefore you you you, you don't get your ksuba. Now Gemara says, by let's say the going back to marriage to the first guy. Okay, it's after ten years. After ten years, they're ready to get a divorce. So Bezdin forces the divorce, okay? Let's say we're going to assume that Bezdin, it's not clear. Bezdin will force the guy to divorce her to marry somebody who's capable of having children. So who are Mina? 
he's telling that she's the problem, okay? And therefore, why is he saying that? Because he doesn't want to give a ksuba. Uh, because it's her the problem. He amra mine, and she says, I'm hurt, certain that he's the problem. So who do you believe? Amar Rabami, Rabami said, Devam anything that has to do with uh, uh, marital relations, Namana, she's believed. And therefore, it's his, the, she, we believe him, her, and that he's the problem. And therefore, she's supposed to get this ksuba. The time of my, what's the reason? Why is, why is he, she more certain than he is? So the Gemara tells you a biological fact. He, when she has relations, right? She, Kaima, she's very certain law, that she knows for certain that his sperm, can, she can tell that if his sperm shoots like an arrow, right? She feels it inside of her. Who but a man, he's never certain if his sperm shoots like an arrow. So therefore, he's never really certain if he's capable of having children. She, who feels it inside of her, can determine for sure if he's capable of having children, and therefore we trust her more than him. Okay, now, Omar Ihu, another case. Omar Ihu, if he said, okay, you want me to get divorced. You want me to get divorced, right? We're married 10 years, I'm going to get divorced, and I have to pay this big sumo. He says, I have another way out of this. Ezel insev itisov ibdik nafshai. I'm going to go marry a woman, and I'll test it out. I'll have a, a second a co-wife. And if I could have children from that co-wife, that proves that I could have children and she was the problem. So let's say he does that. Even in this case, he would still have to give the ksuba, right? Because Rab Ami is, is of, the, of the opinion that when you're married for 10 years, you have no choice of, of keeping the woman. In order to take another me, uh, a woman, you have to give a get and give the ksuba for the first woman. And so therefore, you are forced, this man is forced to divorce the, the, the wife right this moment before he can marry the second wife. So his idea of, of taking a, a, another wife and testing himself out is not a good idea. That's Rab Ami's opinion. So we have to remember that Rab Ami holds that we force him to give a gap. But Rav Ama, and this is important, Rav Ama, and this is, I guess, how we pass him. No, we don't force him to get a, a, a gap, but we, we encourage him to marry somebody else if he doesn't want to give a gap. So he holds that the person can marry many women onto his wife. He can, if he could support these women, yes, we allow him to marry more than one wife. So that's the case. So we have to remember in the Mishnah, when the Mishnah says that the person who's married 10 years should leave his wife, it's a machlekes amaroim in the Gemara, whether you, whether, whether you should, are you forced to give a get? Or like, like, like it's Kapaskin in Shulchan Aruch, that no, you're not forced to give a get, but you have to make sure to marry somebody else who's childbearing. We go to Samech Hayyamabes. Let's say he amar a palgit begoy asef. He amar apelat begoy asef. He amar loy apel. We learned in the Mishnah that if she had a a a miscarriage, so you start again the counting of ten years. So he said, I don't want to give her a divorce right now because she had a miscarriage in, during the ten years. So I still have time to stay with her, and therefore I'm not divorcing her now. He amar. She says no loy apelis. I did not have a miscarriage. But by, 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 by derivation, by saying she didn't miscarry, she's in effect saying that she is somebody who's incapable of having children. Um, Rabbi, Rabbi says, menace. We trust her, and you're supposed to give the divorce. Then Isa, the he pila, if it's true that she did miscarry, she would not try to establish herself as somebody who's not uh, capable of having children. The fact is, it's, it's very negative on her report that she's a woman that can't have children. And, and therefore, uh, we trust her by saying that, no, I never miscarried. I'm supposed to get divorced today. And therefore, he's supposed to divorce her and give the ksuba. Let's say he pila the chazer he pila the chazer pila. Let's say she miscarried three times. She miscarried once, she miscarried again, and miscarried again. So then, she's somebody who, uh, the Gemara says, is a high probability of someone who can't hold full term, Nebuch. And therefore, she could get pregnant, but Nebuch, she can't have the baby. And therefore, and, and therefore, if that's the case, 
then she, even after the first marriage, she's not, she can't get married again for a second time because she's a woman that establishes her that she can get, cannot hold a pregnancy. So what happens? Who am apila trey? He says that you you had a miscarriage twice. He amar tras, and she says no, I miscarried three times, and therefore you have to divorce me now after ten years. Amar Rabbi Yisroch ben Alaz, Rabbi Yisroch ben Alaz says, "Ul dehava be and and there was a there was a story in the base medrash of the argument between the husband and the wife. She said, I, I miscarried and I'm a, somebody who can't hold a pregnancy. And she said, no, you only miscarried twice. I'm not supposed to divorce you now. But Amri, and they said, he, Mahamna, we trust her. Again, the same idea. Then Isa, the Le'apla, because if it's true that she did not miscarry, she would not, uh, not establish herself as somebody who always miscarries. That's such a negative uh, uh, thing, that to, a negative uh, information to put on your report that she can't carry a kid. But the fact is that she's saying that I, I, I miscarried three times. We have to trust her. No Mishnah. The man is commanded on pre, on the pre of Irivia, And it's the mitzvah as say, Shaloi has man gromo. And so we would think that a woman is chayef. Avaloi isha. The woman is not, is not, uh, high, is not, uh, is not, is not, doesn't have to, um, does not have this mitzvah. And what does it mean that he, she doesn't have this mitzvah? Does it mean that if a woman chooses a career um, because, she, because and not decides not to get married, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, technically, that's a machlekes in the, in the, in the Rishonim. She could be uh, not, she doesn't have the commandment, but by getting married, she's misayeya. She helps the man be mekayim the mitzvah pruvu. And therefore, there's some obligation on her part to, to, try to, to try to get married. It's possible that the reason why the Torah did not command her to get married, because at the end of the day, uh, giving birth is a painful experience. And therefore, the Torah does not go, can make a commandment for, for, for a human to go through a painful, very painful experience. So she doesn't have the command approved review, but the man does. And, she, and of course, she, the Gemara explains that she mostly has a desire to get married. Rabbi Yechonon ben Breika, Omer Rabbi Yechonon ben Breika disagrees. Al Shneim who Omer it says by Yeborech Oisem Malakim, by Yemalakim Malakim Pruvu, by Adam Marishin it says Pruvu. Both of you, all of you, should have uh, be fruitful and multiply. You see, it says Pruvu twice. Once by um, once by uh, Breishis, by Adam Marishin Mechava, and once by Noyach. But by Noyach, when it says Pruvu, it's possibly that it's referring to the men because Noyach with his three children are supposed to have pruvu, but maybe God was only talking to the men. But here, only two people were around, Adam and his wife Chava, and it's plural. And therefore, that's why, um, that's why Rabbi Yechon ben Baraka says that the commandment to, get, to have uh, children is on both male and female. So the Gemara asks the question, how do we know that the commandment is only on the male? How do you know that? And this name doesn't appear so often in the, in the Gemara, so the Gemara is going to quote other things he said. But Rabbi Ella said in the name of Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, the Pasuk says, God commanded that you should fill up planet Earth and, and uh, conquer it. Now, since uh, this word conquer usually is a male word, is a male, it applies to a male. The man, uh, is his 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 the normal way of a man is to conquer because they go to armies and 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 the like. They ain't issue dark It's not the nature to use the word conquer by a woman. So therefore, just like this word, the chifshu of that pasuk refers to the man. So also the the commandment which is next to it of having uh, having children only refers to the man. So the Gemara says other just the opposite. The chifshu ha with the above. Uh, with, the, with, with, the, with the extra letter there, it means both of you should conquer the land. So maybe uh, the commandment is on the woman as well. The Pasuk says it missing a letter. So if, you, if, you, if there was no Nukudis in the Chumash, where there is none, it's all tradition, you can read it as he should conquer, one person should conquer, and that refers to the man. So therefore, the whole, the whole, we can say that the whole parsha and the commandment of having children only apply to the, to the, to the man and not to the woman. Rabbi Yosef Amar Mahacha. Rabbi Yosef has another source that the commandment of having children only 
applies to the man. It says, Ani Kel Shakai Pere God tells Yaakov Avinu, I'm the God Kel Shakai, and you should be fruitful and multiply. And so, like Hama Purvi, he didn't say that you and your wife should be more fruitful and multiply. So, therefore, uh, we see that the commandment was only given to Yaakov, not to his wives. Now, another two things that he said, he said, just uh, uh, an ethical teaching, just like it's a mitzvah to, uh, on a person to say something, to, to say uh, words of rebuke that's going to be uh, taken to heart. If, uh, if a rabbi, it's referring to a rabbi giving a, a rebuke to his, to his, uh, to his, uh, uh, to his tzibor. And he's saying it is a mitzvah because that's his job. And if he sees something wrong, if it's if it's if he could rebuke and his words will be taken seriously and accepted, then he should say it. But he has to use common sense, and that's the point of his statement. Kach, there's a mitzvah, mitzvah, not just a he should abstain, but there's actual mitzvah, not to say something that's not going to be accepted. If he knows that this thing is not going to be accepted by the crowd, don't don't try to say it because what's going to happen is that people are going to make you know more fun of you, and then uh, you, you'll you'll be more diminished in their eyes. So if you have to be use common sense uh, to see if if it's something that people will take you and and make a change or not, and if they if they're not going to, then just leave it because there's a mitzvah not to say it, not to say not to say this kind of rebuke. Rab, Rab Abba Ama, and what's the pasuk? Rechech techiach kesamisecha v'leisisa all of chait. Rab Abba, Rab Abba Ama Choiva. He said not only that, it's a danger. Choiva means over here, it's like dangerous if he would say something um, uh, da- dangerous to say something that's not going to be accepted. Because shnema al toichach leitz, don't give rebukes to a scorning person. Peng yisna echo, maybe they'll come to hate you. So not only that, they may not, they'll make, not only make fun of the person giving the rebuke, but actually the crowd is going to hate him. So don't give a Musa that causes people to hate you. Give rebuke to a smart person, and he'll love you. New thing. We'll do two more things, and then we'll stop. Ella said, A person is allowed to change, not to lie, so to speak, but 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 to change something so it sounds like it can be interpreted in a positive way, and he can do that, even though it's not the truth, for the sake of peace. Shunema, the Pasuk says that after Yaakov died, the brothers were very concerned that Yosef would hate them and take revenge for selling him. So they went into Yosef after the funeral, and they came back to Mitzrayim, and they said, uh, uh, that, oh, by the way, your father, Avichat Siva, Yaakov Avinu, before he died, commanded us, Yosef, go tell Yosef, go forgive your brothers. It's true, Yaakov never said such a thing, but the brothers seem to have made up such a story in order to, that, uh, the, to you know, make amends with Yosef, so he shouldn't take revenge now that Yaakov passed on. And they wanted to do it for the sake of peace. Now, what? why is it not an outright lie? Because they could say, Avichat Siva, uh, that your father commanded many things. Oh, oh, and not this, you know, so you could, you know, put the comma somewhere else and it doesn't look like a lie. Rab Nelson gives another proof. Rab Nelson says, not only is it a a mutter, it's permitted, mitzvah. We find it's permitted, mitzvah, because here God commanded uh, somebody to change the truth. In other words, Shmuel uh, was commanded by God to anoint David and Melech and Shaul uh, David as king, but Shmuel was afraid to do that because how could I go and, and do something like that? And Shaul is going to ask me where I'm going and he's going to kill me if he's finding out I'm anointing somebody else to be the king. So God commanded him to take a take a carbon and tell, Shmuel, tell Shaul and Melech if he asks you anything that you're going to bring a carbon. So obviously God is telling him to change or somewhat lie, but it's not really a lie because he was going to bring that as a carbon, but he's not the whole truth. He's actually going to anoint David and Melech. But God gave him this idea uh, to protect himself from 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 Shaul's wrath. The Bay Reb Shmuel Tana, Rabbi Reb Shmuel had a bracer that said the same idea. God al-Hashalem, so great is Shalom, we find that God 
God also changed the language in order to bring peace between man and wife. The Mikarik said, when, when, uh, when Sarah was laughing and saying, uh, how could it be that I, I and I, who is old, and now that I, uh, and I, who am so old, and not only that, my husband is so old, how are we going to have children? And therefore, when God appears to Avram and complaining about, to complain about Sarah, why is she laughing? He retold the story that Sarah was only upset, that Sarah was only complaining that she was old, but she didn't complain that you're old, Avram. So he didn't want to really tell her what Sarah said, that you, you are old, Avram, because that would bring animosity between Avram and Sarah. So we see that even Hashem changed it around a little bit, uh, so in order to keep the peace. So we should end off with Shalom here. We'll continue with Hashem tomorrow and catch up. Okay. Shkayach, thank you. Shkayach. Okay, I'll get the nacht, everybody. A good nacht.